Steph from Ferret World here. I just thought I would jump on and do a live video just um, because I know I noticed <laughs> that you know a lot of people are scared at the moment and there's a lot of uncertainty in the world, a lot is going on and I just wanted to check in with you and see how everyone is doing in our wonderful community um, and yeah just tell me how you're going, how you're doing, are you scared? If, if that's the case and that's totally okay if you're worried about your ferrets, then that's that's valid as well, and it's totally okay. So, I just wanted to check in with you and see how you're doing. As you can see, I'm in in my van. I'm currently traveling around Tasmania in my van with my puppy dog, who's sleeping over there, and I've got a lovely big cold sore. Yes, because <laughs> I've been stressing a little bit as well, and and my immune system has gone down. Um, but now, now I'm making sure that I take my vitamin C, wherever it is, it's somewhere around. Um, but I just wanted to let you know, I'm just going to close this window. I just wanted to let you know that, you know, behind the scenes, Ferret World, the team, we're all looking into what's going on with COVID-19, with coronavirus. Um, and one of the things that I really want to mention is Make sure you don't spread misinformation about this. We don't really know how, you know, COVID-19 affects pet ferrets at this stage. And we're looking into it. I'm going to contact some vets. Um, the team are working on, you know, how ferrets are being used with the vaccinations that are being produced and all that kind of stuff. So we're looking into it. And I've seen a, a meme that said that, Ferrets can definitely contract COVID-19, uh, but I haven't seen any evidence, any scientific proof as yet to, to prove that. So I'm not sure what, what, I just, you know, there's nothing confirmed yet, and I just want to make sure that we're spreading the right information and we're not adding to this fear and chaos out in, in the world. So that's really important. So we're looking into that and... I want to put together some resources for, for everyone just to make sure that, you know, just for peace of mind, that we're staying calm, we don't have to freak out at this stage. I know that, you know, when something unexpected happens, some, sometimes our first reaction is to go, ah, what the hell is going on in the world? And we just try to, we go into survival mode, but sometimes we need to take that step back and go, Take a deep breath. So everyone take a nice deep breath right now. <sighs> take a deep breath. Educate ourselves. Gain some perspective. Calm our nervous systems down. And then we can make some better choices for ourselves, for our communities, for our ferrets, and for everyone. Um, I can't see a comment, so I don't know if you're commenting or not. Let me see if this works. I can't see. So, we're looking at putting some resources together. Um, what else? Don't, don't spread misinformation. That's very important. I also really want to work with shelters during this time because I know that a lot of fundraising opportunities for shelters are being cancelled. A lot of events are being cancelled. And I really want ferret shelters to contact me um, through the ferret world Facebook page message me or through the website contact me there's a contact link at the bottom of it and just contact me um, because I would really like to talk to you and see how you're handling the situation you know when people freak out um, you know a lot of different reactions come about and I don't want ferrets to be affected by this I don't want shelters to be affected by this too much because ferret shelters are a lot of ferrets last chance and they're the last line of defense and we really need to support these ferret shelters and make sure that they can keep running smoothly so if ferret shelters can get in touch I would be really really grateful for that so that we can collaborate create some resources and figure out what to do next and work together so for the benefit of ferret owners and ferrets around the world because this is a global community and we're all in this together 
So I just want, you know, you to feel supported through Ferret World. I want Ferret Shelter to feel supported through Ferret World. If anyone wants to help out with putting resources together, with research, with putting articles together, then please get in touch as well. We're always looking for writers, um, you know, especially if you really like looking into scientific data, we have, we're subscribed to a scientific database and that's what we base a lot of our information off that we give out because there is so much misinformation on ferrets online. So that's one of our really strong points is that we base pretty much all of our information either on scientific data or by consulting ferret experts and people who have been working with ferrets for a long time. I've already started asking the contacts that I have in ferret shelters, you know, what their thoughts are, um, what they're seeing at the moment, and just kind of keeping my finger on the pulse and just figuring it all out. Um, but it's also important to know that, you know, with the, uh, this virus um, is only slightly worse than, than the flu. Um, so, you know, a lot of people, there are some people in our communities that are definitely at risk and we need to try to minimize that and I love the fact that the world is, you know, and humans are really taking note of the most vulnerable in our societies and that's so beautiful to see, it's so heartwarming. Um, so doing that self-isolation, everyone's trying to do their bit, which is beautiful. Um, and if if you do get coronavirus, um, I'm, you know, most people are going to be okay, but we're just trying to figure out if it is transferable to ferrets and just make sure that we give the right information. Um, but at this stage, just to take precautions, if you do get coronavirus and you do have ferrets, then just treat it like the flu. Um, you know, ferrets can contract the flu from humans because they are zoonotic animals, it is a zoonotic disease, um, they are zoonotic animals, <laughs> so they can, we can share those um, viruses with each other. So when we get the flu and we have ferrets, it's just important to make sure that we cover our, our mouths when we're around them, try not to handle them if possible, uh, wash our hands before we touch them, and uh, just try to distance ourselves from the ferrets as much as possible, just to minimize the risk of them getting it. Um, I would also talk to your vets, just get in touch and ask them some questions in regards to how they're handling the situation and what to do in a situation if you, know, you do come in contact with coronavirus. Find out when they're open, when they're not open. Make sure that you have a ferret specialist um, nearby as well and also respect the fact that you know if they do stay open they're putting themselves at risk too so we really need to respect and honor the vets and the nurses that are working at this point in time too um, you know the events that we've seen in Italy and France that's been a lot of people are scared because the countries have gone into shutdown and you know people are queuing up and doing, you know, trying to get food and market shelves empty and stuff like that. So, you know, just as a precaution, it might be worth just getting that extra bag of ferret food. You don't need to hoard or anything like that, but it's just like a precaution just to get, get you through like maybe an extra month or something like that. Also make friends with your local butcher so that you have a fresh supply of, um, of fresh meat if your ferrets do eat raw. Um, and also contact people within the ferret community, get in touch with ferret shelters, they're going to be coming up with strategies on how to get through this. So right now, the more we are together and the more we are within our community, the better it is for everyone. Um, and that way we can all um, get through this together, essentially. So let's just get through this together, share the love, communicate with each other, even if we're self-isolating, definitely communicate with each other, be there for each other, support each other, and just come up with some strategies. If this happens, what is the best course of action? And just come from more of a rational, um, calm place rather than ah, freaking out. <laughs> because the freak out 
isn't always the best decision. Um, we don't we don't always make the best decisions from that place. That's just pure survival. So if a tiger was coming at you, then you would be like, ah, what do I do? Hiya! <laughs> but um, in this situation, we really do need to stay calm and make choices from more of a grounded perspective because there's a lot of stuff happening. There's a lot of complexity at the moment and we just need to be able to analyze it, categorize it and go, okay, this is the best course of action. So I'm sending you lots of love. I wish I could see these comments, but the comments aren't showing up. I'm not sure what is going on. Can you see? Can you see? I'm just going to write a comment and see if you guys can see it and maybe then I'll be able to see some comments. But if you do have any comments or anything like that, then please pop them in the um, box comment box below. I'm looking to create some resources, if that is what you want. Um, and just communicate. Let's keep the communication channels open. Stay in the place of love. And yeah, just support each other as much as we can. Sending you lots of love. Mwah!